Welcome back to Garcho's Garage. Finally, we're back. And today, I'm going to show you my little baby. Sorry for the long delay. We've been away for, oh God, a long, long time. The last video was back in May, I think, and we were playing around with our old Audi. We were changing the oil, changing the gearbox oil, all that sort of thing. Uh, since then, an awful lot has happened. We got married, which is rather exciting. Um, uh, but my wife, by the way, she's the person behind the camera, holding it and uh, making sure I don't do anything too silly. Uh, but yes, she said yes, so we got married, so that was rather exciting. And uh, we had a little holiday, and we concentrated rather a lot on my other channel, that's the organ channel where I do lots of music stuff on church organs and things like that. And uh, yeah, another sort of thing happened that we didn't really get a chance to film and uh, we lost our Audi. Yeah, we had a bit of a, a bit of a mechanical disaster and we had to sell it. There was something rather wrong in the engine. We weren't quite sure what it was. It just stopped working altogether. We're not sure what it was. It could have been a broken timing chain. <sighs> Could have been something with the with the um with the valves we're not terribly sure what it was but something happened and uh turns out things like this can sometimes happen to old audis when they've got rather a lot of kilometers on them and well we had to lose it anyway back when we started the channel i sort of mentioned i think in my very very first video ever that the audi wasn't the only car we had we had some other vehicles in the fleet and this old Mercedes that I'm sitting in at the moment, this is the car I've actually owned the longest in my entire life. I got my driving license when I was 17, which is what happens in the UK. It's normal, you get it at 17. And since then, I think I've had about 50 different cars. And this one is the one I've had the longest. I've had it for almost 10 years. And I've clocked up almost 100,000 kilometers in it just by myself. When I bought it, it had about 160,000 kilometers. So what's that? 100,000 miles. And I've put about another 100,000 on it since I've had it. And it's an old Mercedes from the mid 90s. It's a 1995 Mercedes SL with the small engine, with the 2.8 six cylinder engine. It's an SL 280. And today we're going to have a look at everything that needs doing on it, and it's a lot. This is it, this is my ratty old Mercedes SL in black. It used to be red, and a former owner got it repainted to this rather lovely black. It's original Mercedes black paint, um, and it was rather well done whenever that happened. I mean, it's a long, long time ago, but the paint is getting rather old and done, and at some point it's gonna need a complete repaint, but that's not what needs doing on it at the moment. Now, first of all, you're gonna sort of say, well, what's it doing in here? This is a rather wonderful, uh, sort of wonderful feature of the German car tax system, as it were. You can, you can register a car for only certain months of a year, which I think is rather brilliant. Uh, this car is my summer car these days, and I'm only allowed to drive it between the months of April and October. So it's on, it's on the road for six months of the year, and the other half year, basically, it sits here in the garage and uh, gets spared the winter salty conditions and so on and so on. But it also gives me a chance to sort of get around to doing all the things that need doing on it. Now, when I bought this car 10 years ago, it belonged to an old friend of mine from Bonn here in Germany. And he rather sadly passed away and his daughter inherited a collection of cars from him, mainly classics. Now, this was his daily driver. Um, and I bought it from the daughter for a rather, a rather embarrassing sum of money, actually. We wanted to sort of keep it in the family, as it were. The old guy, Dieter, who owned this car, he sort of belonged to a sort of group of chums who worked on cars and classic cars and things in Bonn. And uh, I bought the car, like I say, from his daughter when he died. And I got it for the princely sum of 6,250 euros. That was back about 10 years ago. So, and of course, there were a few things that needed doing to it back then, which of course we did do. 
but I had it then as a daily driver for the best part of five or six years. That's how I managed to clock up 100,000 kilometers in it. And only now, since I moved to this part of Germany, has it become my summer only car. And it's now really time to get back to restoring it to its former glory. And today, I'm gonna to tell you everything that's wrong with this poor old Mercedes from the front to the back. And like I say, it's a long list. Let's start up front in the engine bay. And uh, it's a bit dark in here in the garage. We need to work on our lighting a little bit. Um, but maybe if you give me that little lamp here from the other iPhone, I can sort of light up the engine bay. Now, it's the 2.8 liter six cylinder engine and it's the proper six cylinder engine, not the V6. It's the inline six, which is absolutely wonderful. This came in two variations. There was the 2.8 and the 3.2. This is the 2.8. It makes about 193 horsepower, 193 PS, as it is over here. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's tons of room in the engine bay to get things done. Now, something that was rather embarrassing up here, check this out. The insulation up in the bulkhead, that's been eaten alive by rodents who have decided to spend their winters in the car. So that's going to need replaced at some point. Now, if you look at the inside of the bonnet or hood, as our transatlantic cousins will tell us, um, you can see the sort of pretty nasty red color this car used to be. And there is, of course, there should be insulation on that. And that I've ripped that off because it was so old and falling apart anyway, that's come off. So what I'm gonna get done, I'll remove the bonnet at some point and that's going to get a complete respray inside and out and it will get new insulation and so on and so on. So those are the little cosmetic things that need to be done, including that bit at the back there. But there are many mechanical things that need to be done, even up here. I've written a list of things that need to be done on this car. And I've got this list here for you on my iPhone. And these are just the basic repairs that need to be done to get the car back to its sort of proper, 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 proper driving style. And if we start right at the front, we need things like the air conditioning, for example. Now, in front of the normal radiator, there's a little sort of air conditioning condenser. And over the years, all the sort of dead bugs and wasps and flies and bees and things that fly into the front of the car, they sort of get stuck either in the radiator or in the condenser. And as they decompose, they sort of, the acids in their dead bodies eat into the metal of the condenser and of course of the radiator and eventually they get leaks and all the sort of, all the fluids inside them or the air conditioning uh, gas that sort of leaks out and it's gone. So I've had the car refilled, <coughs> excuse me, two or three times over the years. And <coughs> obviously it's not that that's the problem. So the condenser is definitely dead and it reads replacing. So while you do that, you obviously replace the air conditioning filter and dryer. That's fine. We can get that done at the same time. While I'm in there, I will be replacing the fan clutch, which is you know on the normal cooling fan. There's a sort of a viscous clutch on there that sort of activates at certain temperatures and so on and so on and so on. That needs replaced because what happens is when you're sitting in traffic, the car will overheat. When you get back out on the motorway and start driving again, it will cool down again. Now, some people out there are gonna say, ha ha ha, that sounds like your head gasket. No, in this case, it is just the viscous fan. So nothing to do with that. That's actually a really simple job. I could do that in a couple of minutes, but there's no point doing it without doing everything else that's around it, which includes, of course, the belt. The fan belt. Now the fan belt itself is okay, that has been replaced, but the belt tensioner and the pulley and the damper, yeah, Mercedes is, you know, it's completely over the top. Wait there, I'll show you this. Over engineering in the, in the 90s, yeah? I've already bought some parts already. And there's like this little, this little shock absorber, yeah? Now some people are gonna say that's probably for the you know, for the trunk, for the boot mechanism. No, that is for the belt pulley tensioner. That's Mercedes over-engineering for it. So that's already been bought and that's gonna be replaced soon. Obviously, I'll put a new belt on it while I'm in there. While I'm also in there, I might as well replace the water pump and the thermostat. Now, I have a water pump there. I bought it years ago because normally around the 200,000 kilometer mark, these engines, you know, they start to sort of wear out the water pump. So far, so good. 
knock on wood. So far so good, this water pump is still going. It's still the original, but I'll probably replace it anyway. So and do the thermostat while I'm at it. Now, now we're getting to the big stuff. Now, I don't know if you can see this. This is my garage. This is Gartro's garage. And it's a normal domestic garage. And I can't get, because of the door mechanism, I can't get a lift in here, yeah? I could get a small lift for this car, which would be quite handy, because a lot of work needs to be done underneath the car. One of the first things that desperately needs done are the motor mounts. Now these are the original motor mounts in this car and they're absolutely shot. When you're driving along, the whole car vibrates. And at first I thought it was bad tires. Then I thought the shocks were gone and so on and so on and so on. They've all been changed over the years. So it's not that, it's definitely the motor mounts. They're sort of fluid filled or oil filled or hydraulic motor mounts that sort of hold the engine in place basically and let it sort of, you know, vibrate a little bit and they cancel that out a bit they are just dead this car is 24 years old now and of course they've gone so they need doing while you're at it you also do the gearbox mount that's actually a really easy job yeah the only problem is you need to get under the car you need to jack up the engine to get the motor mounts out and then you need to of course jack it up a lot further to get the new motor mounts in because the dead ones are about that high the real ones are about that high that's going to be a bit of a job in a domestic garage hmm um, I've already mentioned the bulkhead insulation and the bonnet insulation. So those are just the things that need done around the motor area, the engine area of this car. That's part one. Part two would be the front suspension. Now, like I said, pretty much everything in this car is original. 24 years old, 260,000 kilometers, and hardly anything has been changed over those times. I have done the dampers, the shocks, but I'm going to have to change everything. So at some point, I will be replacing the wishbones with the ball joints, the lower wishbones. I'll be doing the sway bar mounts, springs, maybe put new springs on it to you know, really get it back to its original driving feel. So new springs, new shocks. While I'm in there, I'll do the steering tie rod ends. I'll probably do the steering damper. That's, yep, that's something very similar to this that sort of makes the steering nice and smooth on an old Mercedes. And while we're down there, we might as well put on some new brakes. So replace the discs and pads, and that's probably it for the front. Now the same thing will have to be done at the back. We're gonna put new brake discs and pads on there. There's a sort of a multi-link rear suspension on this car. Some of the links have been changed over the years because you can sort of feel the cars bumping around sometimes. So some of those links have already been changed, but I'll probably do all of them. Um, and there are rear suspension mounts back there there are two inner mounts and two outer mounts they call them little ones and big ones in mercedes parlance so uh, they're going to be done and that's an absolute pig of a job to do if you can't get the car up on a lift it's actually much easier to just remove the entire rear suspension assembly and just do it all then so we will see i haven't decided how we're going to do that there so those are sort of the big jobs that need to be done why am i telling you this well like i said the car's here for the winter and i need some I need some fodder for some new videos for the channel. So I think this is going to be our winter project. Yeah, we'll get all this stuff done at some point. General, I'm going to put a new set of tires on the car at some point. The seats, seats look all right from this side, but the back of the seats need to be repaired. I'll show you that in a future video. The carpets need a good clean. The interior lights, most of the bulbs have blown over the years and they're a pain to get to. So I'm just going to remove the entire interior and do all the lights. Um, it needs a new screen, check this out. This happened like two days before the car was off the road. That was at the end of October. We were following a truck along the autobahn. It threw up a rather large stone and bang, right in the middle of the windscreen. So that's annoying. So that's going to mean a new windscreen. Now at the moment, we have the hard top on the car. Yeah, The car comes with a hard top and in the back there's already a soft top. Now there's an old, I don't know, have a look back, there's a video Doug DeMuro did a couple of weeks ago about this exact SL model and he showed you the soft top working, things like that. Now my soft top works perfectly, but it's old. Yeah, the windows at the back, they're plastic windows and they've just basically deteriorated with age. They're sort of, you can hardly see through them anymore. So I'll either be replacing just the windows or maybe just the rear part of the soft top or maybe I'll just replace the whole soft top. Some of that might be able to be done over my insurance. So I haven't decided yet, we might get some of it done there. So at some point we're gonna need a new soft top. The wiper mechanism, this sort of amazing Mercedes one wiper arm assembly. It works fine, but there's a 
there's like a, a sort of a contact ring inside there which tells it where it is on the windscreen and that deteriorates with age and that seems to be gone on mine because sometimes it sort of it stops in the middle sometimes it stops over there it very rarely comes back to its original position so that needs looking at <sighs> i've already mentioned the paint um i've shown it to you on the inside of the bonnet yeah that it used to be red and now it's black well it's going to be touched up at some point yeah so the paint will be done that's something for the real future that's way way away um and then there's the sort of the usual service items that need to be done like uh, the yearly oil change coolant change needs done i'll do the brake fluid while i'm in there the rear differential oil my rear differential is dry which is a very rare thing in an old mercedes now it either means it's sealed and working properly or there's no oil in it and it's dry so we'll have to check that out. It run, doesn't make any noises, which is all right. So it should be okay, but we need to change the differential oil and maybe I'll need to get the differential resealed. So that would mean if I've got the rear suspension assembly out, obviously the differential comes down with that. So that would be a good point to send that away and get that resealed. That's definitely not something I'm trying myself. That's, that's beyond my limits. Uh, air conditioning, obviously once I've finished repairing the air conditioning, that's going to need a refill. And then there are the usual things like air filters, fresh air, cabin air filters, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. And while I'm at it, I'm going to double check all the fuses, all the relays, and then all the bulbs around here, not just the interior bulbs for the dead interior lights, but all the bulbs on the outside as well, just sort of freshen everything up again. So that's a little list of all the things that I think need to be done on my 24 year old Mercedes SL. Doubtless, once we get into it, there will be another million things that need to be done in addition. For example, the exhaust. I think this is still on its original exhaust. Now it's all right and it's, it's, it seems to be airtight at the moment, but at some point the exhaust is going to need doing as well. So maybe I'll put a new exhaust on it while I'm down there anyway. <sighs> So you can see there's rather a lot to be done on this poor old car. Now, do you think it's worth it? I only paid like six and a half grand for the car 10 years ago. And well, they will eventually go up in value these things. Now this one does have quite a high mileage on it. And all of these repairs that need doing, well, I mean, it's basically sort of, it's a, like a personal thing, yeah? Am I increasing the value of the car by doing this? Let me know what you think uh, down below. Feel free to comment anything you want. Tell me, maybe you think I should repaint it to its original red color. Yeah, it was it was something called, I think it was called Almadine Red. Is that a word? I think it was something like that. And it had it had the red here and these panels here, these, these plastic side panels here, they were sort of a gray color. Also the front and rear bumper, they had a sort of gray color and the rest of it was red. That sort of ruby red you saw on the inside there. Maybe we should restore it to its original color. Maybe it would be worth more if we did that. So what do you think? Let me know. While you're down there, you can of course subscribe to the channel. You can ring the little bell so that you get an update of when we actually start doing all this wonderful work and something new. You can support the channel. Now, when we put up our second video that was back in May, I think I had 200 and something subscribers. We've now got over a thousand subscribers. I didn't post a single video and we've still got 800 new subscribers in seven months. That's amazing really, isn't it? So thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, maybe you want to help support the channel. We've set up a Patreon account to get the ball rolling a little bit. And for small amounts of monthly cash, you're allowed to uh, help us here with the channel and it's all going to be poured into the channel. So either equipment for the channel itself or things to help us uh, make this channel a better. I won't be spending it on things like parts for the car because it's my private car. So that's going to have to come from my private income and things like that. But yeah, any income you wish to help us with is of course greatly received. So thank you very much for that. I think that will do it for today. That was a brief introduction to the car. Next time we'll start getting into the workings of it and I'll show you a few of the things that happen inside the car as well. Like I said, there was that Doug video a couple of weeks ago and sorry, Doug, but you got a couple of things wrong, but we'll tell them about that another time. Thanks for watching. That was it, Garcho's Garage with me, Fraser Garcho. We'll be back very soon with some dirty hands and some work on this rotten old Mercedes. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye.